Hello, welcome to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian, and as you might guess for the title of my channel, I do all my modelling on the kitchen table, just like I did when I was a bear. Today, we've got Ravel's brand new tool in 148 scale Bristol Bow Fighter TF Mark 10 to have a look at. I've read a couple of online articles and a couple of magazine reviews, and it's supposed to be a really, really good kit. I've also got Tamir's old moulding of the uh, TF Mark 10 to compare against the new moulding and see how far Toolin's moved on in the 20 years or so since Tammy released the kit. So, enough waffling from me, let's get the boxes open, see what's inside, and have a look. Okay then, so let's have a look. First off, box art. Fantastic. What a cracking piece of artwork. You've got the ba basics um, of the model here, you've got 148 scale, 188 parts, 26.6 centimetres in length, 36.7 centimetres wingspan. And if you look at the side of the box here, then brand new tool in 2018. So let's have a look at the opening side and see what we've got. Ravel side opening boxes, not a big fan of them unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. You've just got to live with it. It's not a huge complaint to, to worry about. We've got one, two, three, four bags of sprues, a little bag of clear sprues, and the instruction booklet. Right, let's just set them aside and go through the instructions. So, Ravel, uh, nice, clear, concise, new style instruction booklet form. So it's nice and easy to work with. Nice color printing. There's all your symbols. Gives you instructions on what to do, where for, and what for. Uh, we'll take them out. That's the decals. Colors. Um, unfortunately, it's just in Ravel's own color. So you might have to refer to references as to what colours to print. And then we're on to the sprue map. A couple of blank spaces, so that's kind of hinting that there might be other releases coming out shortly. And more sprues. And then we're on to the main instructions. So first off, building the cockpit. Side walls, bulkhead, instrument combing, instrument panel seat, rear bulkhead, and side bulkheads for the wing joins. All looks quite nicely detailed, really simple instructions to follow, and very promising. Moving on, we've got the ammunition boxes for the belly guns, and we've got the lower seat mount, heating tubes, and then seats for the rear gunner navigator and some more rear bulkheads obviously you've got a choice between which one you're going to use but looking through the instructions it seems to be that you're going to be using the one with the doors on rather as one with more stowage tail wheel going through and access door all on one lower belly pan which actually looks quite good that then goes into the fuselage half. Looks like you've got nice interior detail in there. A couple of ports to open up. And then it's closed in, ready for the next step. Moving on to the wings then after that. Um, wings lights, oil cooler intakes. Again, looks like you've got a choice between each one, telling you to move on to the end to decide which one it is. Uh, Wingtip lights. Very nice. And then moving on to one of the big changes from the Tamiya kit is you've got positionable flaps. Looks like it's going to be a fantastic detail option for this kit. Um, inner flaps, outer flaps, and then you've got the control surfaces on the outside of the wings. Again, they also look to be positionable because it's telling you not to glue them. So you could have a bit of deflection in there to make a bit more interest in the model. Brilliant. That is a complete departure from what time you had, who just had the solid wings. Once you've got the wings assembled, you've got the front access hatch for the pilot, and then the fuselage and wings are mated. Moving on to the engines. Again, the engines look to be more detailed than the Tamiya, old Tamiya ones, that were just single piece molded items. Um, but you're probably not going to see much of the engine detail once the cowls are, are, are built up. Um, just due to the, the, the narrow opening and the propeller boss, but we can have a look through that as we go through. So, engines coming together, inlet ring, engine cowlings, 
You can have the option between flared open or closed for the cooling flaps. And then moving through, placing them on the wings. You've got the intercooler, sorry, the turbocharger inlets, porcupine exhausts. Uh, again, there's choices between the short and the extended tropical ones, so we're hinting that we're going to have other kits. Um, and then a little breather at the back of the, the wheel wells. So that's all looking really nice. Then we're moving on to the horizontal stabilizers, and again, a massive departure from the Tamiya kit, you have got a one piece stabilizer with positionable control surfaces. Absolutely fantastic. There was quite a pronounced dihedral on the back of the bow fighters and have that one piece molded integrally that you don't have to worry about positioning the angles to get them correct makes your life as a modeler an awful lot easier. Plus the fact we can position them as well so we can put a bit of deflection in and make the model look a little more interesting. Brilliant. Really looking forward to getting that bit built. And then onto the tail. And you've got the two options of the standard tail and then the one with the rear ventral fin. And then from there we're moving on to the wheel wells. And it looks like you can either have them closed or open because you've got the undercarriage as the next steps. Placing them in, placing in wheel well undercarriage door supports by the looks of it. Cutting the doors to fit them. Okay, so we definitely can have it in flight or on the ground. Brilliant. And then moving on to the propellers. And again, we've got choices of ordinary propellers or propellers with a spinner cap. And then Pito tube, aerial mast, and the diamond, which is the torpedo in this case, which is brilliant because that's the one I really want to build. And then you've got the colour markings, so you've got one with Normandy invasion stripes, which is reminiscent of the old Tamiya kit. And then you've got the one with the ventral fin, which is the Royal Air Force North Coast England, May 1945. Sorry, I should have said the other one was Langham, England, June 1944. So this will obviously be the last wartime service of um, the bow fighter in the European theatre. Well, fantastic. The instructions look really good. Let's have a look at the decals. Lovely matte decals. Don't look to be too thick and heavy. They're all in register. You can read all the small writing basic instrument panel decal all looks really nice printed in Italy so the chances are they are going to be cartographed so they should go down really well right then let's have a look at the sprues and we'll dive straight in to the sprue bag containing the wings uppers and lowers and you've got some of the internals here for the cockpit and the cockpit floor what do we think? Well, really fine recessed panel lines and detailing on the wings. And you've got internal detailing here. There are a few ejector pin marks. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. They're not too pronounced. Um, and there is a bit of release agent on. Obviously, it's a new tooling, so the molds are going to be brand new. So you can hear as well, plastic's really nice and firm and crisp. Very reminiscent of Hasegawa, so hopefully that will lead to it being easy to work, easy to glue, and give us great detail. Don't know if you can see that in the light, but you've got lovely rivet detail around the engine nacelle, the and you've even got rear vents on the oil cooler housings. Brilliant. That's the upper wings, lower wings, much of the same. You've got ejection ports here for the wing guns, and you've got the belly guns here. An access hatch. I'm assuming that piece has got to be cut out. Uh, there we go. Revel 2018. So that's telling you it is a brand new tool. Again, one or two ejector pin marks. You're not going to see any of them, but they're a bit grubby around the edge, and that's just basically release agent from the mold. Right. So this is the floor pan marked again with Revel 2018. And you've got a couple of different noses. You've got plain nose, nose with the camera gun on it. You have got the pilot's bulkhead, even with a bit of detail in there. Very nice. Uh, they look like to be the horizontal control surfaces on the wings. Aerons, if I remember rightly. Seat details with molded harnesses. Really nice. You've got a couple of seats that'll be pilot and rear navigator observer. 
There's your parts of your sidewall there. With really nice detail, to be honest with you. For Ravel, there's no flash. The moulding looks to be really crisp, concise. Not sure what these two parts here are, but they're obviously something to do, possibly something to do with the wings and the rear of the flaps. Just a plain moulded floor, but really crisp, really nice, no flash. Good detail, that'll be the rear observer's gun. Pretty basic, but you're not going to see much of it anyway, so it's all right. And then we move on to the instrument panels. You've got two different instrument panels. So again, uh, for, uh, Ravel hinting on different boxings. We've got the top control combing. Again, nice detail. Basic, but when you look through the cockpit glass, once it's complete, you're, you're going to get an idea of what it's about. You're not actually going to see loads. And you've got details for the tail. Obviously positionable tail, which is brilliant. And then you've got the inside of the wing roots, which is really, really nice. Pitot tube looks nice and fine. And rear aerial, again, looks really nice and fine. Okay, let's have a look at the engine next. Without putting two sprues in a bag here, multiple sprues in the last one, but they're quite tightly taped together so they shouldn't move around too much, you shouldn't get too much damage on the parts. Right, so what have we got here? Well, there's your undercarriage doors, really nice detail, and not much of uh, a line to cut through. Lovely internal detail and no ejector pin marks, so you can get them weathered up and you're not going to have to worry about getting rid of ejector pin marks. Really, really nice. Um, oil cooler leading edge vents, rear vent for the wheel well, um, control mechanisms for the control services, air intakes there, they're the tropical ones, and these are parts of the exhaust fairings here. Again, lovely recessed panel lines, you're going to take a wash lovely and it will be cracking. Now, engine cowlings. Again, really, really nice, fine recessed details on these. You've got the little bulges for the tops of the cylinder heads. Don't know if they're just 100% in scale. I'm not an expert on this aircraft, so please don't take my word as gospel. But if you look at the recessed panel lines here, they're really, really nice. They're going to take a wash beautifully, and they'll really set the engines off. We've got a spinner cap, pretty much basic spinner cap, very cleanly moulded. A little bit of part in line there, but nothing that a swipe the sand and stick won't sort out. On to the engines. I'm assuming that's the exhaust and this is the inlet manifold here. Again, lovely crisp mouldings. Still this crack in plastic. Nice detail on the engines. Nice gearbox on the front of the engine. You're going to get that painted up. That's going to take a wash beautifully and what you're going to see of it will be really, really nice. You've got the fair rear fairings for the cooling the engine, open and closed, positionable, so that's really good. And then the undercarriage, which looks really quite fragile, quite thinly moulded, intricate, intricate detail. It's going to take a wash beautifully, so it'll really pop, especially with a bit of a dry brush. Um, having built a, a Tamiya kit, it looks to be a little bit less substantial as the Tamiya one so for the size of the model hopefully it'll hold it up okay and you're gonna to have to be really careful removing some of these extra molding parts here um, but it should build together really nice next bag that is just a double of what we've just looked at so we're not needing to get that one open and then on to the fuselage halves, comes in two halves on their individual sprues, again beautiful recessed panel lines, they're going to take a wash perfectly, very very fine, um, cracking detail from Ravel and internal detailing, that's going to take a wash brilliantly, no ejector pin marks any way that you're going to see them, there is one or two but I don't actually think you're going to see them because I think there's going to be instrument panels in the way, um, but you might want to give it a little rub with a sand and stick just to make sure. Um, that it doesn't cause any problems during the build and same on the other side a little bit of extra detail along the top of the the cockpit 
so it should come together to be a lovely model. Right, you've got a choice of two um, horizontal stabilizers. So Ravel is definitely hinting that there's going to be another box in. I uh, wouldn't be surprised because it's quite a popular kit for many modelers. If we just look at this one first, again, really, really fine panel lines, really fine panel lines, possibly even finer than what the Tamiya kit had. Um, and a, we've got the lovely ribbon detail on the control surfaces and a slightly matte texture. Might hint towards the fact that they were um, linen rather as metal skinned. Um, and a nice smooth surface on the actual metal parts of the plane. Got the torpedo on this one here and a rear bulkhead and parts of the, the, the later model TF ventral fin here which one piece molding, well sorry two piece molding, she got the long piece and then the piece for the front of the tail all looks really really good. Ejector pins wouldn't think they're going to be much of a problem. Might be worth just taking a bit of a, a scalpel and scraping then any burring off. Little bit of burring in, in where the moulds have parted, but nothing that's going to cause anyone huge problems. Rear tail wheel. Really, really nice detail on this again. Really finely moulded. Should come together really nice. And the thimble nose, which is the one I want to build. Not, not a popular choice for many folk, but I particularly quite like this one so that's the one I'm going to go for and then we've got on its own um, a rear bulkhead optional bulkhead probably for a different model again lovely nice detail in it all looks really promising right let's have a look at the clear parts I'm going to mound the plastic around me very tightly wrapped together two sprues three sprues what have we got in here? Three sprues. So we've got top of the canopy, wing landing lights, wingtip lights, uh, gun sight, and that is obviously lights for somewhere else in the build. Not quite sure about that. Right. Um, not the clearest, I'll say. I don't know if you can see through them, but. They're a little bit wobbly wibbly, distorting the lines of the cutting mat underneath. A little bit of scratching on it, to be honest with you. From what I've seen of all the other parts, these really kind of let down the kit a bit. They're not as crisp and as clear as you would like to see for modern injection molding. Um, don't know how it's going to affect the overall build. They're not huge huge optical, well they don't look through these loads so there's not just going to be a huge amount of detail that's going to be obscured by them but it doesn't bode well for the other clear parts. So we'll look at the rear observer's bubble. I like the way it's moulded into the actual opening as it would have done on the real aircraft. It's different from Tamiya. Tamiya just provides you with a bubble that sits on the fuselage. So you can obviously pose this open if you want a super detail inside. This thankfully is clearer than these pieces. There is a little bit of distortion in the glass, but I think if you're gonna pose it open, it won't be a problem. And for all that you're gonna see inside the fuselage, it's not gonna be a huge problem. I think they could have been a little bit clearer, but we can live with it. And finally, the cockpit glass work. And this is the clearest of the lot, thankfully, because it's the one you're gonna see most of the detail with when you paint up those, the cockpit detail that Ravel's included in the kit. There is again a little bit of distortion, but it is glossy, it's shiny. If those that dip the canopies want to dip it, it'll be okay. If you don't want to dip it and just paint it, it'll be okay. Um, it'll be interesting to see the difference between this and the Tamiya one. I do like the fact that they're extending it into the fuse front of the fuselage a little bit, which should make for a better join along the front of the canopy. But obviously we'll only see that when we get the thing built. Right, so there's the Ravel kit. So let's just set this aside and then I'll grab the good old Tamiya kit. Don't see a date on this. Okay, yep, there we go. There's the date. So copyright 1999. So this is just about 20 years old, 19 years old. My math serves me right. Um, there's the ventral fin. So that's the striking part of it. I know there's a bit of Eddard photo etching here I bought years ago. 
Tamiya decals, well, we all know about them. They're hit and, hit and miss. They either work or they don't work. Um, let's have a look at the wing sprue. So Tamiya with multiple piece wings. Nice plastic, as Tamiya always is. Pan lines, I would say, if we get them side to side. Are deeper, probably a bit more defined, and the detail is definitely different in scale than the Ravel one. Now, which one's right, I don't know. I'm not really fussed either, to be honest with you. If it looks like a bow fighter, it is a bow fighter. If it's 100% accurate or it's not 100% accurate, it doesn't bother me. As long as it builds to a nice model, that's really all I'm worried about. So there is a bit more engine detail around on the Tamiya one, and it's a bit more pronounced. Again, it's up to the model's preference. I still think it's okay, but... If we look at the Tamiya wings, the lower wing, you've got one piece Ravel, the plastic, and then Tamiya comes in three pieces, so you've got joints to worry about. So this one's definitely going to be easier, and Tamiya don't include the option of dropping the flaps and positioning the control surfaces. So Ravel, top marks to you, you've definitely stepped it up when it comes to this new moulding. Right, cockpit. Internals, give it the timer. There's not as many parts in their kit, but it's all nice. However, Tammy has got a whole load of push pin marks, ejector pin marks throughout the the inside. So if you will want to open up somehow, you're going to have to deal with them. Um, let's have a look. It's good that we've got some comparison directly between parts. There's the Tammy part. There's the Ravel part. Which one's right? I don't know. Um, I would say Ravel looks to be a little more refined detail and in scale, but I'm not an expert on this aircraft, so I can't 100% tell which one's right or not. Anyway, um, cockpit. Sorry, I've got a mess of screws here. Co Tamiya cockpit's molded in one. Ravel, you've got side walls, top combing, instrument panels. You can see that. So again, they're slightly different in size and scale. Which one's right? Don't know. They've both got raised details and they'll both take a wash and detail really nicely. And I imagine if you're using the decal for the instrument panel, it's going to show up fine for all that you're going to see because there is quite a narrow cockpit opening. Um, but I would say Ravel, if you look at there, you've got the control column there and there's Tamiya's control column. There's a side by side review, so Tamiya's significantly larger. Again, I don't know which one's correct. Is the Ravel one correct? It's a lot smaller. Is the Tamiya one correct? It's a lot bigger. Don't know. I know the Tamiya one will be better to detail because it's larger. You can get more detail put in it. But whether it's right or not, I'm not sure. But we'll have a look when we build it and see what we get. Panel lines on the outside for the Tamiya, again, consistent with the wings. A lot more pronounced than the Ravel one. Um, but they'll both take a wash really nicely. The Tamiya floor... It's got this checker plate pattern on it, which the Ravel one doesn't. Um, again, I don't know if that's right or not, but that'll take a bit of a detail and a wash if you will want to open it up and, and, and have a look inside. Um, and then we've got the engines, which is kind of the most prominent part. Let's have a comparison between that and the Ravel one. And the sprue. Well, there we go. There's the difference you've got between Tammy and Ravel. Wheel well. Huge difference between the landing gear and the Ravel one. Very stout, nicely detailed. It does take a wash really well and it looks great, but whether it's accurate or not, I'm not sure. But you look, compare it with the Ravel one, and the Ravel one's a lot more fragile, but still detailed, probably more detailed. Um, and if it holds up, it'll, it'll do really well. Um, and then we look at the engines and it's worlds apart. You've got a single piece mold Tamiya one and then you've got multiple parts for the Ravel one including exhausts and inlet manifolds. So if you're going to open up the, the engine casings on the Ravel one, because you can do that, there are multiple parts, you're going to get a really, really great engine to detail and it'll look fantastic. Tamiya one, single piece, you really don't have the option unless you want to go down the resin route um, so Ravel definitely stepped up here and possibly showed Tamiya the 8, uh, well, 
basically showed um, Tamiya that you can improve on what they've got. But that's not knocking Tamiya, it's still a really cracking kit and for all that you'll see if you close it all up, it's still a really nicely detailed engine. Tamiya you get a couple of crew with it, Ravel you don't. Um, and Ravel, plain tyres, whereas Tamiya you get details on the hubs and the tyres. So what you get in one department, they may be lacking in another. Whether it's accurate or not, I'm not sure, but it looks really promising. So, there we go. That's all the parts. So there we go. Ravel's brand new tool, 148 scale Bristol Bowfighter TF Mark 10. What do we think? Very promising. Loads of detail internally in the cockpit, engine bays and wheel wells, and then all the control services that look to be positionable. So it should build a fantastic model for your display shelf. So what's next? We need to cut some parts off the sprues, get them stuck together, painted, and see how it builds. So until next time, happy modeling guys. Cheers.